Hi, my name is Dr. Hannah Marshall. I'm a psychologist at the Heart Institute, and today we'll be talking about stress, depression, and anxiety. So to start, stress. What happens to your body in a stressful situation? Well, your body reacts by releasing stress hormones. In response, your heart rate and blood pressure increase, your breathing becomes faster and more shallow, your skin starts to sweat, and your entire body revs up into high gear. In the short term, these reactions make you more alert and more able to deal with a stressful situation. But if you're under stress for a long period of time, other changes can occur that are not so positive. These include, one, your fat cells that were released into the bloodstream for extra energy become converted into cholesterol. Two, platelets circulating in the blood become more sticky. And patterns of daily life may change, making it more difficult to eat well, exercise regularly, or get enough rest. So how do we manage our stress? Well, here are a few tips on managing stress. How we think about an event determines its impact on our health, and therefore it's important to identify what causes your stress and how it affects you personally. It's important to be physically active on a regular basis. You also want to identify and use your social support networks. So this includes friends and family. If you're feeling overwhelmed or if you're having difficulties functioning in your daily activities, it's important that you speak with your doctor or nurse about different options that would be available for you. You can also attend a stress management program. Here at the Heart Institute, our stress management program consists of five 90-minute sessions in a group format. And the sessions focus on breathing and muscle relaxation techniques, looking at ways to improve assertiveness communication skills, uncovering and changing negative thoughts, and they also use humor as a good coping strategy that will help you manage your stress better. You can register by calling 613-761-4558. The cost is $30. And if you have family members that are also interested, you can contact the University of Ottawa Heart Institute Prevention and Wellness Centre to get more information. Now we move on to depression. Depression is common in people with heart problems. About one in five patients, so that's about 20%, experience clinical or major depression. If you're feeling at least five of the symptoms listed below for a two week period or more, you may actually be developing depression and it might be important for you to speak to somebody about how you've been feeling. So symptoms of depression include feeling down, feeling blue, feeling sad, losing interest in activities that you used to enjoy doing, changes of appetite, sleep disturbances, significant changes in, in your weight, loss of energy, difficulty with concentration or memory, feeling like you want to withdraw from friends and family, feelings of worthlessness, helplessness, or hopelessness, changes in sexual desire, or thoughts about death or suicide. So many people ask, how does depression affect your heart? Well, depression affects your heart in two ways, directly and indirectly. Depression affects your heart directly by increasing the risk of blood clotting and plaque buildup. It negatively affects your immune system, so you're less able to fight off germs and viruses. Depression may affect your heart indirectly by influencing some of the decisions you make. So people with depression often find it difficult to make healthy choices about quitting smoking, exercising, eating, or taking medication safely. They find it difficult to find the drive or energy to make healthy lifestyle changes. So what do we do if we're feeling depressed? Well, some tips on managing symptoms of depression include do more pleasant activities even if you don't feel like it. We know from research that this is very important. It's important to exercise regularly and do activities that you enjoy doing. It's also important to set realistic goals and do one thing at a time. When you're feeling down you might not feel like you're doing enough so it's important that you celebrate your achievements. You may need to record your daily activities to prove to yourself that you're making gains. It's also important to take time for yourself. Give yourself that time, that space that you need, especially in your daily life when it becomes really busy and when the focus is on others. It's important to take time for yourself. You also want to talk about problems or concerns. Seek support and don't bottle up your feelings. 
you can also participate in the cardiac rehabilitation program. And if you're finding the symptoms of depression are hard to manage, it's important that you talk to a doctor or mental health professional like a social worker, a psychologist, or a psychiatrist about proven treatments for depression. And last, we move on to anxiety. Anxiety is one of the most distressing emotions that people feel. At some point in time, most cardiac patients will experience varying degrees of fear or nervousness related to their health condition. This is normal. Like depression, about one in five cardiac patients experience significant anxiety symptoms. So these symptoms may include uncontrollable worry, feeling on edge or restless, feeling irritable, muscle tension, lightheadedness, sleep problems, being easily fatigued, changes in heart rate, headaches, sweating, or stomach problems. Anxiety describes a number of problems, and these can include things like generalized anxiety, where the individual has a mixture of worries experienced most of the time. Individuals can also have panic attacks, which are intense feelings of anxiety, sometimes accompanied by increased heart rate, sweating, and oftentimes you feel like you're going to die. Post-traumatic stress disorder is also another anxiety disorder, and this includes experiencing, witnessing a horrifying event, and subsequently, individuals have repeated memories of this terrible or traumatic event with high levels of fear. So how does anxiety affect your heart? Well, anxiety may play a role in cardiac problems by increasing the risk of an irregular heartbeat and triggering spasms. Both of these responses may lead to cardiac complications. Anxiety may also lead to unhealthy behaviors, such as smoking, overeating, poor sleep, and decreased physical activity. So what can you do if you're feeling anxious? Well, like stress and like symptoms of depression, you can also find ways that can help you manage your anxiety. So one such way is practice relaxation techniques. So relaxation techniques include things like taking a nice, slow and deep breath, and just sitting there and feeling your breath, taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Another type of relaxation technique is imagining a pleasant scene, whether that's a beach, a quiet park, and some place that is relaxing for you. Another relaxation technique includes relaxing muscles throughout the body. So starting from your head and working your way down right to your toes and just letting your body and your muscles relax. Another technique is distracting yourself from your thoughts or physical symptoms, such as counting backwards from 100 in threes. You can also do something pleasurable like read a funny book or watch a movie that you've been wanting to see. If you're feeling anxiety, it's important that you share your fears and worries with someone you trust. Don't try and deal with this on your own. Individuals also find it helpful to manage anxiety by learning how to recognize what is it that makes them feel anxious and from there develop a plan. It's also important to challenge yourself to change the way you're thinking about a problem. So for example, tell yourself, I can handle this, I've done it before. Or, I'm not going to die, it's normal for my heart to pump harder when I'm exercising. So determine how much control you have in a given situation and let go of things that are beyond your control. Another way to help yourself manage anxiety is to participate in a cardiac rehabilitation program. And again, like stress and like depression, if you're finding that you want more support and are looking for more treatments, it's important to talk to your doctor or mental health professional about proven treatments for anxiety. For more information on mental health issues, you can visit the following websites. You can go to the Canadian Mental Health Association at www.cmha.ca or visit the Canadian Psychological Association website at www.cpa.ca.